Hit a button, Morty. Give me a beat. Oh, this is a podcast. I got Cheyenne Floyd on tap today, and I'm um, super glad to have you here. How you doing? I'm good. I'm yeah. recovering. Recovering from a crazy weekend. Yes, homecoming was a lot of fun. Yeah, uh, yeah. Just to set the scene a little bit, we are in the seven five seven. We're out here for um, Hampton homecoming. Mm-hmm. Um, you are a Hampton alum. I'm a yes. Hampton alum. What what year did you say you graduated? 2014. 2014. Nice. So my I graduated. First time back. Yeah, I graduated 2000. Wait, this is your first time back since you since have left. Since I graduated. Nice. I told okay. myself I wouldn't come back. To really? <laughs> oh, okay. We're going to unpack that. <laughs> We're going to unpack that. Um, real quick, before we get like too deep into the conversation, the first thing I ask everybody to do is give a quick rundown, like a literal, literally like three sentences of who you are, what you do, real quick. Okay. I am Cheyenne Floyd. I'm from Los Angeles, California. I do reality television and influencer brand promotions. I also have a nonprofit. I have a clothing line that I started back in college. I'm in the process of building a event planning company and I do something else. <laughs> I just can't remember. All kinds of shit. I'm sure you do all kinds There's of shit. There's way too much yeah, stuff. Yeah, straight up, straight up. No, that's great, great context for where we're about to head with this. But I do want to kind of start the conversation with where we are. We're in Hampton. And like we said before, you started, or you went to school here. I went to school here. We didn't necessarily know each other when we were both here. So I want to know, like, who were you when you were in college? Like, what type of shit were you getting into? What was your life like you really don't in college. want to know. I do want to know. I'm interested. <laughs> what type of shit were you into? College was fun. It was all a blur. Yeah, facts. But no, I had a very fun college experience. Mm-hmm. I started off as broadcast journalism. I switched over to public relations. Um, I really liked the aspect of PR and advertising. Um... I'd say I was a little bad. Who isn't in college? Right. I made some very good decisions <laughs> and right. had a lot of fun nights. I did work a lot. I worked as a bottle service girl for about three different clubs. Mm-hmm. I also worked at a hookah lounge. I also worked at a tattoo shop. So So you was getting your money and getting your education. Yes. It's lit. It's it was lit. a lot of fun. Yeah, that's a fact. That's a fact. Um so you said you studied broadcast journalism and then went to PR. Mm-hmm. What did you think your career was gonna be or what did you want your career to be? I wanted to be a newscaster. Oh, really? What why like where did that come from? I don't really know. So it, just... it was something about being on T V but in my head at the time, I thought, okay, this lady's on TV and she's talking. She knows what she's talking about. She's intelligent. She's writing her own stuff mm-hmm. and producing her own stuff. That's totally not what she's doing at all. She didn't write anything. She didn't produce it. I didn't realize at the time that there were so many different aspects to newscasting and production and shows that go into it that... When it just became, okay, you'd be a face, then I, I didn't really like that aspect of it yeah. more so. So yeah. I wanted to do PR because with PR, I would be allowed to have some type of like creative abilities mm-hmm. and to write press release or do damage control and that kind of fit my personality better. Yeah, You mentioned writing a couple of times. Is that something that you're into? Are you into writing? Yeah, I've always been into writing since I was a kid. Um, when I graduated school, I took a year off, when well, my parents let me take a year off, and I sat in my dad's office and I wrote a book that I think only my parents have been allowed to read, but it, I, I almost had to write down like my college experience to be able to like get back to reality of like real life. Mm-hmm. So it was like I used that to like decompress, and mm-hmm. then after that I was ready to like start a real career Start pursuing your career yeah so, yeah i feel that um as far as i kind of want to stick with the writing thing a little bit just because like i i like the creative thing behind it is that like as far as creativity goes mm-hmm. that's your primary way of expressing yourself i would say i try um as i've gotten older i kind of don't do it as much mm-hmm. now that i'm a mother I'm going into it from a different aspect. So a big part of my brand is that I co-parent, 
than that I'm black and I co-parent well. Mm -hmm. And that's a a stigma that we get that we don't do that. Yeah, facts. So within that and now having this platform, I'm trying to figure out different ways to shed light to the side of co-parenting that is good. Mm -hmm. My daughter's now at the age, she's two and a half. She's now talking. She's now realizing that there's a mommy's house and there's a daddy's house. So I've been meeting with publishers to start a um, co-parenting books for children that do show children of color in a good way in a successful right to explain situation. you know mommy's house and daddy's house mm-hmm. so right now that's kind of where i'm like getting to put my creativity in a different way mm-hmm. i never thought i'd be doing it yeah but i mean i i like having the platform i like being able to do different things yeah so you said you took like a year off mm-hmm. what did you do that for like what were you trying to accomplish in that year off or I feel like when you graduate school and whether you take four years, five years, however long you take to do it, Mm -hmm. when you are in college, especially I think the historical black colleges, you almost have like this false sense of this is what reality is. And then when you get back home, it's like, no, this isn't reality. That's a fact. You, there is a much bigger world and there's lots of different other people and you have to learn how to navigate that bigger world again but you just took four years to learn how to navigate this college world and then of course you have the pressure of people asking you so what are you gonna do what now what are you doing where's your and, money coming from right. like everybody what job did everybody you everybody all in your business is right. crazy so i did a lot of research into it because i was starting to feel like okay i just did four years of college I was always on the dean's list. I did, in my head, I did excellent. Oh, wait, so you got good grades in college? Yeah. So even though you were like partying and having a great time, you were my all about your shit? My parents don't play. Oh, okay. So. Is it, were you like that as a kid too? Like you yes. always got good grades? Okay. I've always been very structured. Yeah. Um, this The way my brain works, I have to be very structured. Um, but when I was applying to jobs, I wasn't getting them. And I was depressed and confused. And then the outside pressure of my parents friends and everyone constantly asking me like well what is she gonna do now you know it it made me feel weird so i'm like okay this has to be a thing so i started doing research on it and a lot of students who get out of college that first year fall into depression because of the pressures but you know you apply to these jobs and then all you hear back is well you don't have experience well duh i was just in school for (laughs) four years so what do you what do you want me to do like so I think my parents saw that I was getting discouraged. They themselves are business owners, so they allowed me to fall back on them. I started working for their offices in the transition of figuring out, like, what I was going to do now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's very interesting. Um, It's crazy. Another kind of parallel is my folks were kind of the same way. I kind of went through the same thing when I graduated. I didn't feel like my major and my profession that I was heading towards was what I wanted to do. I was a biology major. Mm-hmm. I was like planning to go into medicine, you feel me? And I just like, I graduated and I didn't feel like that's what I wanted to do, yeah. you feel me? So like, I also got into that kind of like sad state because I think the universe has a way of like knowing what you want. So mm-hmm. like I was applying to all these jobs and I was applying to go to grad school for PT and I just didn't get in and I kept getting like rejected so I was like dog like what's like you know what I'm saying like what's the issue I got I got the degree I got you know what I'm saying I'm a a hard worker I I knew I was qualified but I couldn't understand why I wasn't getting what I thought I wanted you know what I'm saying when I took the time to kind of like reflect I was like I don't want this you know what I'm saying like I'm not getting it because like God knows I don't want this you know he's not trying to give me some shit that I don't need you feel me but also my folks Uh, own a home healthcare business that I, to this day, run. Mm -hmm. But I started running maybe two years after I graduated college um, just to kind of see if I could do it. I know I was making videos and I started this whole nation thing and I I knew I wanted to make this a business. So I was Mm -hmm. like, let me apply, let me learn from running my mom's business. You know what I'm saying? And fucking five, six years later, I'm still there like running the show. But- it's very difficult, you know what I'm yeah. saying? We were talking a little bit earlier about how like I've had to learn so much about myself in that. So It's definitely like yeah. a self-reality check and I I got checked when I moved back to LA. Yeah. 
I got checked fast. Yeah. What and was moving back? Yeah. What was moving back like for you? I was excited to be out of Virginia and excited to go back home. Um, but then once I got back home, it was like, okay, I'm back at home. Like I just went from living by myself in my cute little townhouse, <laughs> my cute up. little poodle. And now I'm back at my mom's house. I was like, this is lame. This ain't it. <laughs> like, is this really what this is about? Straight up. So it was kind of like, you know, what am I really doing? Or what am I trying to do? What are my goals? And at the time, I really didn't know. But in all honesty, I never in a million years would have ever put myself on a reality show. How did that come about for you? So in my year that I took off of... um in between college and trying to figure out my career. Mm -hmm. I was working at my dad's office. Um, it was around the same time that The Walking Dead was like- The hottest thing the on hottest TV, thing. straight up. So I wanted to be a zombie extra. Oh, okay. Just to knock it off my bucket list. Okay. Um, Were you watching The Walking Dead at this yes. point? Okay. But I've always wanted to be a zombie extra. <laughs> Where did that come from? I don't know. Okay. Um, my sister was determined cause to make this happen for mm -hmm. me. So we were trying to find, like, I was on different casting sites. And, like, a lot of them I found through my Facebook. So Facebook always connects your login page with these websites, you know, whatever. Yeah, facts. So my information started just coming on the casting sites. So we found how to become a zombie extra. Then I learned that you had to take a 16 to an 18-hour zombie class. And I was devastated because... I'm not doing you that. Can't do that yeah. In my head, I'm a really good zombie already. I don't need a class. <laughs> I don't need no damn class. I don't need a class. So I was genuinely upset. So my mom, being the super mom she is, she threw me a zombie party instead. Mm -hmm. And all my friends had to come as zombies. And then if you didn't, she turned our front bathroom into a zombie fire. And she had like the makeup and the going there scars. And Everything was ready. Facts. So I had this awesome zombie party and i was over my you know issue of being a zombie extra i got my fill mm -hmm. um that next week i got an email from mtv to apply to are you the one which at the time was only on its third season are you the one is a dating show mm -hmm. i knew nothing about it i didn't watch mtv honestly mm -hmm. i probably shouldn't say that <laughs> don't fire me <laughs> um so i knew nothing about like this mtv life World. right yeah. Um, when I did Are You The One, people on the Are You The One show kept talking about the challenge. Mm -hmm. Like, you got to really do this to get onto the challenge. I'm like, what's the challenge? Mm -hmm. They're like, you don't know what the challenge is? I'm like, no. No. <laughs> I don't. And they said, yeah, there's, there's, there's a rumor that they're going to start crossing over shows and that the people who perform well on Are You The One can cross over to the challenge. I'm like... Well, what are they doing on the challenge? And it's like, oh, it's like fear factor. I'm like, fuck, no, I'm not doing that. I'm like the most scared person in the world. I don't need to do that. So these girls on Are You The One would like really perform during our challenges to win a date. Now, me necessarily, I just did my hair. It's hot. I'm going to sit down and watch you guys bust your ass in the sand. Yeah, thanks. So when I got the call for the challenge, I'm like, oh, they need a loser. Can be me. They need someone to they need lose. Somebody to that, lose. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't work out. It would before then. I I wasn't into fitness. Mm -hmm. I don't like scary stuff. I'm a lose, yeah. and I accepted my role. Yeah, yeah. no, it makes sense. I was like, sense. all right, yeah, another show, another check. I was yeah, going go for a couple loser. weeks. Right, we lose, yeah, straight up. Um, few of my cast members, majority of my cast members all hated the fact that I was the one that was called because I was definitely the laziest in the house. They'd get up and like work out and I'm like eating bacon. <laughs> Wait, so they were mad? The, the people from mm -hmm. Are You The One were mad that you were called? They were to be on a the little challenge. salty. That's interesting. Because the way the challenge works to get you get a call mm -hmm. and like calls go out and everyone's like, oh, who got the Did call? Did you get a call? Did you, you get, get the call? call? Yeah. So and we had a, a group chat and everyone's like, oh, we all got the call. I didn't get a call. So I'm like, but I wasn't expecting to get a call. Yeah. So I'm like, you know, cool. And then a few days later, I got the call and then other people didn't get the call. So I'm like, okay, how does this work? And then it was like, no, you, do you want to do it? And I'm like, okay. 
I had no idea what I was really walking into mm-hmm. or what I had signed up for. And you mean that in what way? Like it was um, worse than you expected? The towns was the hardest thing I've ever done in my life besides childbirth. Well, uh, please just elaborate. Uh, first day we get there, we have to jump out of a plane to even get to the beach to walk up to meet TJ, who's the host. I'm like, you want me to do what? Like, you didn't wait. Did they tell you like the types of stuff that you were going to? No, nah, they mm-hmm. didn't tell you what you were. You just you basically signed your life away that you were going to do it, but they wouldn't tell you like yes. none of the activities that you were going exactly. to be doing. Exactly. And I'm like, okay, if I can jump out of a plane, I can do anything. That's a fact. That's a, I w- I want to get that fear out of me so that I can feel what it you just said. It wasn't a fact. The oh, next no. shit was way worse. <laughs> I'm like, can we go back to the plane? <laughs> can we just do this? Can we day? just do this? <laughs> no, that's very crazy. Yeah, so I actually um, ended up getting kicked off the first elimination. Mm-hmm. And I was like, a little bummed, but then like not really bummed because the shit was hard. Yeah, like yeah. the challenges were the challenge. I don't remember what the first, the very first one was, but they were hard, and I could just tell like that this challenge lifestyle world. Mm-hmm. It's almost like cultish. Um, the people weren't like the nicest. It's definitely like something I felt like you had to like get jumped into the gang yeah, of like yeah. challengers. Like they would, they were like, um, I felt like I was online like. You know, they were kind of mean. Mm-hmm. So I got sent home. I got a call as soon as I got home. Do you want to come back? This couple dropped out. Um, do you want to come back? My partner called me. He said, I'll do what you want to do. I'm like, I mean, like, I, I, my bag is low key, still packed. <laughs> we can go back. We end up going back. And long story short, we end up placing third. Um, how did that happen? Like, I have no idea. I, I'm interested I, in knowing, like, what are some things that you learned? Like, what what are some challenges that like really pushed you into okay. ways that you didn't really made you find abilities about yourself that you didn't know were there? I've been buried alive for three hours, um, in like a legit little box. Uh-huh. We were in Mexico, so it was hot as hell, and like. It's legit, like, okay, you're going to get into this coffin. This is a hole that you breathe from. This is a bell that you ring if you think you're going to really die. But ring it before you die because it's going to take the man at least six to ten minutes to unbury you. Okay. Like, you're legit six feet. Yeah, yeah. And then once you're there, it's like this and it's like this and it's like this. And I'm like, wow, I'm really in a box underground. Like, if... You know, the world ended right now. I couldn't get out. Yeah, that's so fucking crazy. That was definitely one of the hardest things I've ever done. Um, I've stood on a crate little box with my partner for a day, literally a day overnight. That was pretty hard. So the boxes kept getting smaller by the hour. Mm-hmm. So when you're like really on a little box. Mm-hmm. And they would do things to mess with your mind, like a mariachi band would come and play over and over and over and over and over and over again. And it was a lot of mind fucks. Mm-hmm. Um, gotten pushed off a cliff. I've climbed one of the tallest mountains in Argentina. I've had intestines, balls, brains, guts. Um, I've ran naked. I, I, I would have did that on and off the <laughs> You could have did that at home. I could have did that at home. <laughs> but running naked in front of like a whole production team yeah, and facts. a cast. And it's just like, you're, and it was an eating challenge that to you also. So it's like throw up all over you. It wasn't a good run. Crazy. Um, what else did we do? It was a lot of crazy yeah. stuff. And I, I, conquered like my fears yeah i fell in love with the idea of adrenaline i never thought that i would be like an adrenaline junkie or yeah. like i want to go and do new things or i want to go and now jump off this thing that was just now it wasn't my personality mm-hmm. now i'm more free and like oh right, let's try it doing all those things and like tapping into sides of yourself that you didn't know was there like what i guess 
how do you apply that to your how do you apply what you've learned from that to your life now can you think of deliberate ways that you've been changed by those experiences i would say i definitely take more risk now and i'm not as self-conscious um i'm also very like okay with certain things not working out Mm -hmm. whereas before i probably would have had like a meltdown crybaby Mm -hmm. thing but within the challenge i learned how to take rejection i learned how to navigate people not liking me when i'm used to everybody liking me yeah facts um so almost like figuring out different ways to handle myself and not just blow up and want to fight yeah um i think the challenge taught me that i can do a lot more than what i think i can I just have to be pushed. But yeah. when you're in that environment, you don't want to be the one to wuss out or yeah. to back out or to be the crybaby. So now I constantly put my put my head back in that zone and I'm like, okay, I have to do this. Mm-hmm. Like, I can do this. I can talk about this situation on camera because, you know, I've done way worse things than maybe me stepping out of my comfort zone and talking about something that I'm sure half of America wouldn't want to talk about in front of, you know, a camera crew and then be played on national TV to be judged. It's kind of like I allow myself to be vulnerable because of the things that I've gone through. And maybe yeah. it will help someone else. I don't Absolutely. know. Maybe it's all pointless. I don't know. No, I feel <laughs> no, I, I feel I feel you in the sense of like you don't know, but in my experience, um it's kind of always ended up where it does help someone. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like when we're like super honest about things that we're kind of embarrassed about. Right. There's somebody out there, like somebody out there that right. feels it in a way that like they'll thank you for, you know yes. what I'm saying, putting yourself out there like that. So I think that's very important. But you don't even know that you you don't even know that's there until you do it. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So I think that's very crazy. Um so what was the teen mom experience like for you? If was it any different than the other MTV shows or is, is it pretty oh, much like being on one is like being on all of them? No. No. no? no, no. This one is way different than the other ones. Um, Corey and I met on the challenge. We had a showmance, which is a romance on a show. (laughs) When you get home, you then look at each other and you're like, I really don't like you. Really? I just liked you on this island. Oh, okay. When there was only (laughs) 11 of y'all to choose from. Exactly. We definitely didn't talk at the airport when we met each other. We didn't talk like the first week in the house. And then even she was like, okay, I guess he's kind of (laughs) cute. Okay. (laughs) We then started talking, clearly. Mm -hmm. Um, And we became friends. We became really good friends. Um, I leaned on him a lot throughout the challenge process. And then when we got home, we stayed in touch. We hung out a few times. Then we went to New York to shoot the reunion. Had an extremely drunk day, Mm -hmm. just all day. There was drinks Mm -hmm. just everywhere. And had a drunk quick moment Mm -hmm. and I walked out of there with the baby I it's kind of like a weird story with Ryder Corey came into Ryder's life when she was six months which is because at the time when we shot the reunion I was dating someone in LA Mm -hmm. I wasn't dating Corey Mm -hmm. we hooked up I found out I was pregnant later on way later on I'm looking around like, okay, don't know how this happened. But I naturally assumed that I was pregnant by the guy that I was dating because, you know, that would be the right thing to do. Mm-hmm. Um, probably not, you know, to sleep with someone else. Yeah, facts. But, you know, whatever. I was young. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, I told my mom. She's like, are we having a baby? I'm like, we're going to have the baby. She's like, okay, I'll support you. Mm-hmm. Then I had to tell her, you know, I'm not really sure. It could be option A or option B. She's like... Well, regardless of option A or B, do you still want to have the baby? Mm-hmm. I said, yeah. So I took on being pregnant and my pregnancy by myself. Um, I informed both that I was, in fact, pregnant. Um, the guy that I was dating said, regardless of the situation or of the outcome, if he was a dad or not, he didn't want to participate. So I just stopped communicating. Mm-hmm. Um, Corey... It was more so of like, in my head, I really didn't believe that he was her father because I really didn't remember the 
um, night of consuming of uh, uh, consummation. Uh, is that yeah. what it is? Consummation? No, night of conception. Conception. Yeah. yeah. Don't remember that. Yeah. So in my like head, said it was I'm, a drunken night. So yeah, and yeah. I'm like, you finished? Wait, <laughs> like I still don't know like Straight how up. this happened. <laughs> Straight up. So I was like, hey, I'm pregnant. Like, there's a really small chance that you can be her dad, right. but like. Did you finish? Yeah. You know? And he was like, I don't know. Was, he was I'm like, great. So yeah. I just took him out of my head. Mm -hmm. And I, I'd I, never, I didn't think about it, mm -hmm. to be honest. And people are like, why not? And I'm like, I was so focused on my pregnancy that I didn't care who her dad was. Yeah. And Like you knew you were going to handle business? Is that what you're saying? I knew that I, I really put in my head I was going to be a single mom. Yeah. And I was okay with it. Yeah. I've always wanted to be a mother. I've always wanted to be a young mom. And people would always look at me like, what? To, you can ask my mom to this day. I've always said I wanted to get married young and I wanted to have a baby young. So it wasn't a surprise to my family that I was so okay with being pregnant. Mm -hmm. um, I had Ryder uh, and, I, and I was like, all right. My mom asked me, do you want to do a DNA test? I said, no. Like, I'm not gonna force someone to be her father if they don't want to be her father. Mm -hmm. um, she has a metabolic condition, so there was a lot of health complications. So it came to a point where a doctor said, look, you need to come in here with the father because we need his blood work to make sure that your daughter's on the oh, right medication. True. So then I'm like, all right, great. Let me put my pride to the side and shoot these, hey, what's up, text. Yeah, yeah, straight up. Um, I asked option A if he'd take a test. He said, yeah, that came back negative. I'm looking around like, who the fuck is your dad? Um, <laughs> yeah. I went back into my memory card. I'm yeah. like, God damn it, Corey. I text him, asked him if he would take a DNA test. He surprisingly was like really okay with it because I really think we both in our heads were like, there's no way that you can be her father. Mm -hmm. But after option A wasn't, I already knew he was, I just wasn't ready to say it. Mm -hmm. um, he did the test. We found out on Halloween that he was in fact her dad. Mm -hmm. She was dressed as a hot dog and that's how he met his daughter. So I asked him like, what role do you want to play? Like, cause you're either in or you're out. Mm -hmm. And he will not leave us alone. He really? is just the best dad. He's so annoying. I hate him so much. <laughs> because he's so I love him so dad. much, but I hate him so much. And he's so damn Why are you good. Here so much. Yes. <laughs> Literally, I'm like, you're still here. <laughs> Straight up. Why do you love your daughter so much? <laughs> I'm like, people are like, you're so best. I'm like, mm hmm. <laughs> but no, Corey is a great dad we have a crazy story mm -hmm. um but we we make it work yeah um so he still does the challenges he's done a million of them that's his thing and he's a fitness guy too right? oh yes yeah. i he was away for a challenge i got the call for teen mom i'm looking at my phone like teen mom i'm 24 mm -hmm. You guys know that, right? Mm -hmm. She's like, yeah, Shai, we know your age. <laughs> I'm like, eh, I'm not really sure. So I, I muted her and I started Googling how much does a girl's on teen mom make? I unmuted her and was like, yeah, <laughs> I can do it. What do you want me to do? I am a teen. Where do you want me to stand? <laughs> like, when do we start? Straight up. But I was so stuck on... I'm not a teen mom and I don't want to like be disrespectful towards like the real teen moms mm -hmm. and I didn't know how they were going to feel about me doing it or the show didn't have any color on it mm -hmm. or people of color so mm -hmm. I'm like All right, you know is that going to be weird um it was just a lot of questions and then a lot of insecurities that came with it and then I'm like oh fuck I'm gonna have to tell you know everybody on national tv that I didn't know who my child's father was. Yeah, yeah. So I'm like, God damn it. This is all moving really fast. Yeah. A few months, maybe not even really. We got asked to do Teen Mom. Um, the reason that we got asked to do Teen Mom was because people already followed our story mm -hmm. on separate shows, separate ways. Yeah. Um, and they liked us. Corey has a really big MTV personality. Apparently I'm loved in the office somehow. 
And now we have this little girl. So they're like, let's follow the story. When you do the first few shows, like, what's your popularity looking like? Like, it, like I'm, I'm sure because, like, you're going from being a right. college student to, like, now on television. I'm sure, like, it grows. But you know what I mean? Like, when you say that the teen mom fan base is crazy, yes. like, what was your, like, how was your popularity growing from doing the first two before teen mom? And, like, how were you handling that, like, new mm-hmm. sense, that newfound, like, people are paying attention to you? Right. So I would say out of college, like, social media then was, like, really starting to be, like, this thing as mm-hmm. far as Instagram mm-hmm. and how many followers do you have. But it wasn't yet, like, a brand promotion facts. platform. Not facts. And around that time, I want to give myself maybe like 10,000 followers, Mm -hmm. right? Yeah, because I felt good. Mm -hmm. You got 10K. I got 10K, yeah. The goal was to get the K. Yeah, yeah, straight up. That was the goal. That's my goal, yeah. And once I got that K, I'm like, Bitch, I'm balling. Like, I'm up. good. Straight up. Look, and I was the brands at. Look I wasn't making deal. shit. I wasn't even doing a brand deal. Straight I was up. just so hyped to say 10k. Like, yeah, straight ooh. up. And it sounds dumb, you know. It sounds dumb, but whatever. I'm being honest. It mm-hmm. was like a thing for me. Like, I want that k. So that was probably around that. Are you the one came out? I did the third season. It was not as popular as it is now. Now those are you the one kids are, you know, their followings are way bigger starting off than what I was then Mm because it was forever ago. Um, I'd say after that show, it probably went up to 30, 40,000 maybe. But how how are you like handling? It wasn't like people in the street don't know. People really didn't know Are You The One. It was just becoming like a thing. So maybe like Every now and then, a random person would be like, "Were you that girl and are you the one?" Okay. Like that was pretty much it. Okay. It wasn't anything compared to what it is now. Okay, okay. And when it was like, "Oh, are you the girl from Are You the One?" It was like, "Me? <laughs> oh my god, that was me!" Yeah, you're straight up. You're like happy to say. It was yeah, like, was wow, like y'all watch that? It. Yeah, straight up. Because in my head, I'm like, I didn't watch it. Like, straight up. So it, it was cool, and it felt good. It felt like you know. I was doing something. Mm -hmm. Um, Then when I did the challenge, that was a much bigger show. So now I'm like, oh, I'm about to be famous. Mm -hmm. No, not at all. (laughs) He probably went from like that one review people to ask to like maybe like a few more. Um, And then the Instagram grew. Then the brand started coming and then I started making money off of my page, Mm -hmm. but not a lot of mm-hmm, money like mm-hmm. not i couldn't live off of my page if yeah. that makes sense yeah yeah so what <clears throat> what is life like for you outside of that like you what like what has it been like for you you said your daughter's two two and mm-hmm. a half um how has being a mom been for you like in the first two years um i love being a mother mm-hmm. i feel like becoming a mother i became like my best version of myself I don't remember anything prior to, or I don't, like who I am now, it's like, okay, I was always supposed to be this person. Who I was before, I don't even remember that person. Mm -hmm. Um, Motherhood brings out a different side of like strength that you never knew existed. Mm -hmm. Um, And love that you honestly aren't gonna know what love is until you have a kid. So with Ryder, I think that because I had her by myself in the beginning and I had her for those six months, we're just so connected at the hip. And then when her dad came, it was like, wait, I have to share her. Mm -hmm. So that was a really hard thing for me. And everyone is like, girl, you're tripping. Like everyone wants a dad in their life, you know, and now you have one who's knocking on your door and you don't want to let him in. But it wasn't that I didn't want to let him in. I'm just like, no, she's mine. Like I did this. Yeah. So she's mine. So it was hard to learn how to then become a mother and co-parent. Um, I found out the day, the second day I brought her home, I got the call that I needed to bring her back because her blood work came back abnormal. And that was definitely one of the hardest moments in my life because it was kind of like, 
okay, what did I do wrong? Mm -hmm. Or like, how did I get her sick? And I put a lot of blame onto myself because I didn't understand the condition. I never even heard of the condition. Mm -hmm. I didn't even know that these things existed, to be honest. So I had to make a decision as far as am I going to, sorry, he's got my ears pierced the other day and for some odd reason, all my hair gets stuck in him. It's very uncomfortable. <laughs> I had to make a decision if I was going to tell people about Ryder's condition because I never want her to be put into a sick box. Yeah, or am I going to open up this conversation because I have a platform to bring awareness to it and to give other mothers a chance to talk about their own experiences? I never wanted it to be something that Ryder's like ashamed of or things that we only talk about at home. Mm-hmm. Um, and then once I realized how rare it was, I'm like, why don't people know about this? Why not I know that there's metabolic conditions and that... You know, there's kids that don't even leave the hospital from it. Or, um, you know, when I had her, after we got all the tests back, we realized that she has to eat every two hours. Um, A lot of babies were dying from SIDS in the middle of the night, and they were thinking they didn't know what was wrong with them. So now a lot of doctors think that it has to do with what Ryder has because you go, as a parent, you're happy if your baby sleeps throughout the night way the metabolic conditions work is that you have to constantly eat or put starchy things into your stomach because your food's on over time to process them. So if there's nothing in a baby's tummy, then they're on overdrive. So then you shut down. They can go into a coma. You can have a seizure. You go into like a metabolic crisis. Um, So when people hear when I say, oh, I had to feed every two hours, they're like, oh, that's every newborn. I'm like, no, no, no. I had to feed her every two hours for months. And in the back of my head, be scared that she's going to go into coma if I don't feed her on this two hour mark. Mm -hmm. So I nursed and she had a special formula. I was a zombie for about the first year. Uh, My parents, my family had a schedule so that I was never by myself because I was exhausted because I was, I couldn't sleep because I'm trying to process that my child has a rare disease. And I couldn't sleep because I'm not watching her and making sure she's breathing every time that she is asleep. And, you know, people are like, sleep when the baby sleeps. I'm like, no, no, no. I need to make sure she's alive. So I'm not going to go to sleep. And then I couldn't sleep because I'm nursing. So I was literally in the bed like this with a tit constantly just out. Like, come on, just eat just Mm -hmm. because. Mm -hmm. So I decided to open it up to tell people that Ryder had a condition. Um... The first time I posted about it, I got so many overwhelming messages that it kind of, I had to step back and think like, okay, am I really going to open this up? Because now I'm getting messages from parents that have lost their children to this, to parents that are currently in the hospital because of this, to parents who are fine. But it took, it's a lot to read a mother explaining how their child had been fine their whole life and now they're seven and they passed away from this disease or that their newborn passed or that their 20 year old passed. And I'm like, I I had to learn how to read them and not take them in. Be emotional about it. Right. Because then you hear their stories and you're like, this could be my, yeah, that's crazy. I never thought of that dynamic of like, because we kind of talked about this earlier where, you know what I'm saying, you speak on your situation and it helps people. Mm-hmm. But I never thought of the dynamic of them, like, bringing their situation in a, from a negative standpoint. Like, it's good that you're helping them right. and that they feel that you, you know what I'm saying, that you bringing awareness to mm-hmm. the situation has helped. But for then for them to then turn around and like tell you, tell me this is their what happened story. to me. And then it's like, damn, I don't want that to happen to me. Right. That's crazy. It's, That's a crazy like- dynamic. It feels weird to say that when I get the emails of, oh, my child has a metabolic condition, it's like, oh, it at first it made me feel good because it's like, okay, I'm not alone. And I hated saying that because then it's like, wait, I don't feel good that there's another sick kid. Mm-hmm. Like, that's not it. I felt good that now I have another mother to relate to or to talk to or, you know, so I had to learn how to read the emails, not intake them, 
and to respond because mm-hmm. how can I not respond to a mother who's explaining to me how they just lost their child? Yeah. And what am I supposed to say? Facts. Facts. What do I say? Like, so it, it was this really weird, weird place. So I'm like, okay, I go to my mom, my sister, my grandma, I say, let's start a nonprofit. I have the platform. I didn't know anything about the newborn screening. It's not mandatory in all states. I didn't know anything about metabolic conditions. They said, okay, we'll take on whatever project you want to take on. So we started the nonprofit. And the nonprofit is to, like I said, bring awareness to the newborn screening, bring awareness to not only VLCAD, but a lot of the other metabolic conditions. There's a bunch of different chains. Um, And then I didn't want the funding to go to some huge hospital. Mm -hmm. I wanted the funding to go from my home to their home, where now we're paying for a nurse to come and sit with you at night because I had family to come and wake me up and say, it's time to feed the baby. There's plenty of parents who don't have that or who have to go to work and they're, who's feeding the kid every two hours? Who's genuinely really watching your baby how you would want them to? So paying for a midwife, paying for someone to come in meal prep, paying for someone to come and clean your house, paying for someone to come and go get you groceries. Like it's the really small things that kept me alive during the hardest time of my life where I wanted to shut down and die Mm because I didn't understand. And I was a zombie, but I was still excited that I was a mother. It was just way too much. Or um, handling some of the medical costs, handling insurance. Ryder's insurance is so fucking expensive because she has a rare disease. She's classified as that. So her insurance is nuts. Mm -hmm. But I'm, I'm blessed to be able to do that. Some majority can't Mm -hmm. so i felt like it was necessary to go from my home to their home um i really believe that the more blessings i give out the more blessings i receive um and the models kind of worked for me yeah so that's where we're at with it we had our first event we raised a little bit over ten thousand dollars we put the event together in about two weeks i was very happy now that's super dope it raised anything. I thought, yeah, you know, like, are people really going to give me money? Like, yeah, how does this up. work? But it's been a life changing um, <clears throat> project, I would say. It's definitely a life changing disease. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's something that I decided to take on and to share with the world. And I wanted Ryder to you know be proud of it like this is who she is Mm -hmm. and yeah she's you know she has this special thing about her but she's not gonna be ashamed about it she's a badass and she's gonna you know make it known on the playground she carries a fucking (laughs) snack pack (laughs) straight up 